Welcome to lecture 10. In this lecture, we will examine equilibrium conditions between phases and rates of diffusion in order to derive expressions that we can use to predict collective or colligative properties of mixtures. This lecture will be divided into three parts, each looking at a specific equilibrium condition. In part one, we will look at the vapor-liquid phase boundary in order to draw phase diagrams for volatile mixtures and use it to discuss fractional distillation. In the second part, we will look at the solid-liquid and liquid-vapor phase boundaries to predict how the melting point lowers and the boiling point rises in mixtures. Finally, in the third part, we will look at the diffusion of a solvent through a semi-permeable membrane at equilibrium to predict the osmotic pressure that arises. Before we get started, we will first review how the chemical potential changes as a function of pressure and temperature. The chemical potential of a component in a mixture changes the same way as previously defined for the Gibbs free energy of a single component system, or small changes in chemical potential is equal to small changes in the molar Gibbs free energy, and that's equal to the molar volume times dp minus the molar entropy times dt. So at constant temperature, the dt term is zero, and we are left with the small change in chemical potential being equal to the molar volume times dp. And at constant pressure, the dp term is zero, so we are left with small changes in the chemical potential is equal to the negative of the molar entropy times dt. We will use both of these relationships later in this lecture. The first topic in this lecture involves fractional distillation, which is used to separate two volatile liquids. Typically, the components to be separated have boiling points that differ by less than 25 degrees Celsius at one atmosphere. Otherwise, simple distillation would be used. A mixture in the round bottom flask is heated so the components of the mixture it contains vaporizes. As we will see, the mole fraction of the more volatile component will be higher in the vapor phase, which allows for the separation of one component for the other. This process is commonly used in petrochemical refining and air separation to produce liquid oxygen, liquid nitrogen, and argon. To understand how this works, we will first examine pressure composition phase diagrams of two component mixtures. An example of this type of phase diagram is illustrated on the right with an indicated pathway for fractional distillation. This is a pressure mole fraction phase diagram. Notice that there are three phases, a liquid phase, a mixed liquid vapor phase, and a vapor phase. At high pressures, only the liquid phase exists. As the pressure drops, the vapor phase can form over the liquid. Finally, as the pressure drops further, the mixture completely vaporizes. There are two phase boundaries, and we will now discuss how both are drawn. For this discussion, we will assume we are using ideal mixtures, say, a benzene-toluene mixture. As a result, we can use Raoult's law. For the benzene, the partial pressure of the benzene is equal to the mole fraction of the benzene times the pressure of pure benzene, and for the toluene, the partial pressure is equal to the mole fraction of toluene times the partial pressure of pure toluene. To draw the phase boundary between the liquid and the liquid vapor phases, we need to describe the pressure of vapor that the liquid mixture produces. We will do this as a function of mole fraction for one of the components, in this case benzene, so that we can get a pressure versus mole fraction diagram. The total pressure due to the liquid is the sum of the partial pressures of the benzene and the toluene. Using Raoult's law, we can write the partial pressure as the mole fraction of benzene times the partial pressure of pure benzene plus the mole fraction of toluene times the partial pressure of pure toluene. Since the mole fractions of both components of a two-component mixture must also add to one, then the mole fraction of toluene equals one minus the mole fraction of benzene. Rearranging gives the total pressure being equal to the partial pressure of pure toluene plus the partial pressure of pure benzene minus the partial pressure of pure toluene times the mole fraction of benzene. Note that the partial pressures of the pure components are constants, so only the mole fraction of benzene varies in this equation. This equation defines the liquid and liquid vapor phase boundary. The curved line being the liquid vapor vapor phase boundary, is drawn using the total pressure as a function of the mole fraction of the vapor. Before we can derive this expression, we will need to derive an expression that links the mole fraction of benzene in the liquid to benzene in the vapor phase using only constants. 
To do this, we will first use Dalton's law to write the mole fraction of benzene being equal to the partial pressure of benzene divided by the total pressure. Then using Raoult's law, the partial pressure of benzene is written as the mole fraction of benzene in the liquid times the partial pressure of pure benzene. The total pressure comes from the relationship we just determined being equal to the partial pressures of pure toluene plus the partial pressure of pure benzene minus the partial pressure of pure toluene times the mole fraction of benzene. Rearranging this to solve for the mole fraction of benzene in the liquid gives the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor times the partial pressure of pure toluene divided by the partial pressure of pure benzene minus the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase times the partial pressure of pure benzene minus the partial pressure of pure toluene. Now that we have this expression for the mole fraction of the liquid, we return to Dalton's law and Raoult's law to get an expression for total pressure. So, the partial pressure of benzene is equal to the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase times the total pressure, which is also equal to the mole fraction of benzene in the liquid phase times the partial pressure of pure benzene. Rearranging gives the total pressure being equal to the mole fraction of benzene in the liquid phase times the partial pressure of pure benzene divided by the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase. Substituting in the previously derived expression for the mole fraction of benzene in the liquid phase means that the total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of pure toluene times the partial pressure of pure benzene divided by the partial pressure of pure benzene minus the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase times the partial pressure of pure benzene minus the partial pressure of pure toluene. This expression divides the liquid vapor phase from the vapor phase for the mixture. Revisiting the phase diagram, the first expression being the total pressure being equal to the partial pressure of pure toluene plus the partial pressure of pure benzene minus the partial pressure of pure toluene times the mole fraction of benzene is the straight blue line that links the partial pressure of pure toluene to the partial pressure of pure benzene and separates the liquid phase from the liquid vapor phase. It is essentially Raoult's law expressed as a function of the mole fraction of one of the components. The second expression being the total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of pure toluene times the partial pressure of pure benzene divided by the partial pressure of pure benzene minus the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase times the partial pressure of pure benzene minus the partial pressure of pure toluene is the curved green line that links the partial pressure of pure toluene to the partial pressure of pure benzene and separates the liquid vapor phase from the vapor phase. To understand this phase diagram, let's trace down from A to E and discuss what happens at each letter. At A, the mixture is all liquid. As we lower the pressure to B and the system reaches the phase boundary, then vapor will then begin to form. If we lower the pressure to C, then both the liquid and the vapor continue to exist. The composition of the vapor is given by the mole fraction calculated at point G, whereas the composition of the liquid is given by the mole fraction calculated at point F. If we continue the lower to the pressure to D, then we hit the next phase boundary. And if we continue to the lower the pressure, say to E, then at this point, only the vapor phase exists.